don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true. Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed it. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair-trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha. -ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Is he with us? Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Fire and will. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. Hey, you have one behind you! Stay on it! Cover As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kids' apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. Thank <laughs> you. 
Watch out! He's one of them! He's right behind us! Garrett's men were Never running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads Let's cut off. Let's send these some bitches running! That enough? Kill him for Christ's sake! Idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. The right position is very important. Personally, I prefer to be on top. Oh, you do, do you? Indeed, darling. But where was I? Oh, yeah. I got this! A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back, back door! door. We got we'll cover you! Try aiming, you idiot! Truth Watch be told, things weren't much better behind the house. I cut their numbers in half. But that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. Like that, You're I was inside, dead, none the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave, dead and upstairs I found Billy and Charlie Bolton. I'm done with you. How about that? Huh? You like that? Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. 
Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. Where the hell did Garrett get to? That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side! I personally put down, but it was pretty clear, even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a Gatlin, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them around back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me, and I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Gonna scalp your ass! Oh. Right. Making my way past the pass of the fallen foes. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. I had the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. Challenged him to a showdown. You read that in a dime novel? 
It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. I stepped inside and bam! Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on. How did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to, the bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang. They were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? Oh, that little son of a bitch shot Jim Bell! The kids escaped raised a huge ruckus. Hell yeah! That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Anybody see him? Hide you, Billy Liver, son of a bitch. I had to 
jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. How the hell did I get escape? Garrett's gonna kick our ass! I can't have gotten far! Gotta be around here somewhere! Lily broke out of jail! Violence is not the answer! So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. This town doesn't have a moment's peace. You! But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, some of them thought I was... <laughs> Kids shared a certain similarity in build and coloring. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. They're shooting in the street! Leave him to me! Get your head stone! There's children here. Show yourself, So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. You're rising too high, if you ask me. Get out here!
town's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> But where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them. The only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt and I had no choice but to play them.
Finally, I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. I killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious? Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clanton. Where's he going? Where's he going? I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead. And I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them? Or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attacked from on high like Apaches off the deep. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground, whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. <laughs> See, at the time, I was still pretty green, and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. Oh! 
I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe <gasps> Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first. Get a moving target! Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be, if Quentin and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? You're done! I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. I got you now! And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune even the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs, Clinton! I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a Gatlin gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun.
Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. <sighs> one of the cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps. And that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the Old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust-up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So, what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys. First, I need to tell you about the Cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise, and after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons wanted revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp, and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Get him from the side. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. There were killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other. And I was beginning to wish I had one myself. But I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what drove me forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. Send him to hell! Uh. Earp wasn't much of a match, uh. but Doc Holliday might have taken it. That Lunger should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. But everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, well, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. 
Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because I Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. Though it wasn't easy as those boys had good cover. everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. Are you saying they ran? Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out in the open. Shit! Time to dance with the devil! No one kills Curly Bill! You work his blood out! Is that somebody hurt? You think you're going to kill me? You asshole!
Ferocious gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. Took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. That's incredible, sir. I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Ooh. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting Plummer looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits, and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men, but Samuel Cole made them equal.
I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves, killers, robbing travelers, and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with Plummer. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's son. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering their neighbors. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone-cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Dangerous, desperate individuals. Plummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand, while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter which I had no idea how to breach. Outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize. They must have thought I was tough. If Daddy had lived to see Alfred Nobel's explosive invention, my guess is he would have told Samuel Colt to kiss his ass. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine. But once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I 
I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. All it takes is one tiny spark, and boom. There he is! As a boy, I always loved the 4th of July. Take that asshole out! <laughs> One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted tomb. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder. A way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. I was determined not to give up, however. As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, People were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Bob. And I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. I wanted to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell? Plummer was a mad dog killer. And the people of Nevada City deserve the best. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Plummer was clearly unhinged, <laughs> and 
and I could see right away that this was gonna take some doing. and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Harden as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. Not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time. And that night in Abilene was no good. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wick. I thought the Texas Rangers got hardened. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. <gasps> It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres.
to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and... Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Harden was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. I'm freezing my giblets off. Ain't right, we gotta stay out here keeping watch like this. Ain't no burn stupid enough to go after Harden anyway. Better three hours early than a minute too late. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. As most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun hands. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friend. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their cafe of my unwelcome presence. Another law dog. Yeah, you know you wondered if Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead, for as good as I was. Deep down, I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. There he is.
I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. to say, nobody there was happy to see me. In fact, I felt a certain hostility. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. <laughs> no, wait! He didn't hit me then! I'm sure of it! That man was faster than Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. 